Hi, I'm Jo Clark, and thanks so much for joining me today. This is the Redefining Midlife podcast, a podcast designed for the 40 plus woman who is determined to challenge society's myths and beliefs around midlife. It's for the woman who is inspired and ready to define midlife her way. Join me each week as I chat to health and wellness experts for up-to-date information on how to live well, as well as some special conversations with incredible everyday women redefining what midlife can look like. Here's to making our next half of life even better than the first. My guest today is Sonia Choyla Rosa, and she has decided that the second half of her life is going to be on her terms. Sonia is a wife, a mum to three, a sneaker addict and a coffee lover. Professionally, Sonia's career saw her leading large teams and working with powerful and important clients in the corporate world. However, this was beginning to lose its gloss and there were a number of pivotal moments that forced Sonia to make some big decisions on the direction of her future. For more than 25 years, she has helped women elevate their personal and professional lives. She has seen and experienced firsthand the key role that image plays in accelerating careers and executive presence for women, while at the same time navigating changes in body shape and juggling busy personal lives. As a certified fashion stylist and holding an MBA in technology, strategic transformation is at the core of Sonia's work. She's been able to combine her unique skill set, corporate experience, and love of fashion to create a new business that empowers her clients through her styling sessions. Sonia works with groups and one-on-one with clients across services such as personal, professional and corporate styling, body shape and colour analysis, wardrobe reviews, personal shopping, group masterclasses and style coaching. And as you'll find out, this episode is also a great reminder that our younger years can leave us many clues as to what our future could possibly look like. And I'm sure that the chat you hear today will ignite something in you. Thanks so much for joining me on the podcast today, Sonia. I know that our listeners are going to be inspired by your story and how you're redefining your midlife. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Jo. I'm really happy to be here. Excellent. Now, in the intro, I read out the highlight reel of your life. And it's always lovely to hear all of the, the things, but I, I also love to be a bit of a sticky beak and find out what happened in your earlier years. Yeah. So tell me more about that. What was life growing up for you like and where where did all of this happen for you? Yeah, sure. Uh, look, if I actually start off, I was born in WA and really came over to uh, the north side of Sydney when I was about five years old. And so if I reflect back on that, I came into the world where having a Eurasian background wasn't the norm. So I remember going to school and one day I would have a pastrami sandwich and the next day would be sushi. And um, and what would actually happen is all the kids at school would be looking at me thinking, oh, my goodness, look at the food that you've got there. That's incredible because around me was Vegemite and butter sandwiches, alfalfa sprouts and Billy, you know, that that type of thing. So having that Eurasian background was very, very different uh, growing up in that world. So I think that really put me on this trajectory through my younger years where I knew I was different and I didn't always fit in so much with the Italian side because, I did, but there was a part of me that was different. And I also then didn't fit in so much on the Asian side either, because again, I, I didn't quite, wasn't 100% that side. And, um, you know, as I said, it, having any Eurasian friends or anything like that just wasn't the case mm. on, on that front. So, did you have growing up, did you have the influence of both cultures? in your well in your home life was that was that something that was celebrated and a part of it or yeah it look it was yeah it was predominantly the italian side because most of my mum's family was located in sydney uh whereas my dad's side is all really based in the states so so they'd uh sort of migrated from Korea at that time, South Korea at that time, over to the States and, and went over there. So apart from phone calls and things like that, um, you know, most of it was mum's side on the Italian side, but dad definitely had a say in the cooking as well. Yeah. And so were you in a multicultural school at all, Sonia, or is that something that it was predominantly, you know, white Caucasians? Uh, I would 
would say it was actually quite multicultural. So I went to the local public school, um, sort of K to K to six, and so it was lots of uh, so there were Polish, European, uh, Japanese, that type of thing. So yeah, it was actually quite a mix, and I think I was you know lucky at that at that time to be able to have that mix. But everyone was actually of that singular sort of background. Yes. Yeah, no, you, you would have been quite exotic for a lot of people then. Yeah. You? yeah. And did <laughs> you feel like then. what's it back then? It wasn't yeah. a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Sonia, what was, uh, what was your big drive that you would love to have done when you were at school? What was your ideal uh, profession, career? What was it going to be like? Yeah, no, um, I think I didn't know what I wanted to do sort of starting off. I, I know I tinkered with computers actually very, very early on. I actually remember coding at a really young age and I was very interested in that, but it wasn't until I hit high school and textiles and design was mandatory in year seven. And they put me behind a sewing machine for the first time. And the and those of us that can actually remember those days, the smell of walking into haberdashery and hearing the cutting of the fabric um you know that sharp sound and hearing the sewing machines and they were Benina sewing machines at the time I was enamored I loved doing textiles and design at, at that age that young age um and then I guess creating my first outfit was uh, really innate in in sort of just deciding oh I love doing this this is so good um, I, I dabbled in history and, and, you know, economics and so forth um, throughout high school years, but my favourite class of all time was always uh, textiles and design. Ah. And did you have a, a sewing machine at home that you could practice? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah de- definitely. So I think at the time my parents um, didn't have one and then because I, I got so into sewing um, and the craft side of things that they ended up buying one um, so that was a bit of a big deal in, in their household so there was fabric always around the place mm-hmm. that I was making things from yeah I was amazed so I was I was a little bit different in that I couldn't bear it like <laughs> I grew up with a mum who loved to sew and would sew us clothes you know until you got to a teenager and you couldn't possibly wear something that your mother made for you but uh, <laughs> you know, she used to make so much for us and yeah I never got that bug and my mother-in-law was a fabulous seamstress as well. But yeah, that's a talent that's I, I think you either ha- well, maybe I'm wrong, but you either you either have or you haven't. And if those who have who are fortunate enough to have can create themselves the most incredible things. Yeah, that that's right. And I think it was the ability to just create something from nothing. Um mm. so, so similar from from a tech side of things, it was being able to code or do something and build something from nothing into something and and there was just something about having the freedom to create yeah. and you know come out of something saying look what I I did so yeah and I think that's where it, it all came from it was also a really relaxed classroom and there was lots of chit chatter and while you were doing work so I always remember it like that. Mm. And did you at that at that age? Would you have been fourteen, fifteen? How old yeah. were you? Yeah, that's right. Um, so probably for year seven, so about thirteen, and okay. then I ended up doing textiles and design all the way through to the end of year ten, and then stopped after that because um, you know kind of getting into those high school, the well, the upper end of of school, and having to pick those subjects and thinking about what life was going to look like post. Yes, um, my my parents had their own business. And so I very much spent almost every weekend um, working in their business from a very, very young age. So that kept me pretty busy on the weekends, but it wasn't until I got to those high school years that I then, the upper end that is, that then had to kind of let go of some of the, the creative side. Yeah. And do you sew now? Interesting. It was actually, um, I hadn't picked up a sewing or actually piece of clothing or anything like that to sew in a really long time after having kids and so forth, right? And it wasn't until bumping into the the lovely Ames yeah. from uh, the Indie Bindi Sewing Society that I were chatting to her and she actually inspired me to get back behind the sewing machine. And so I've recently introduced sewing to my now a seven-year-old daughter, so we made her dress 
made her a little dress around that. And it's been so wonderful to actually have the time to go back behind that and relive. It's yeah. like riding a bike. Once you know, you know, it, it yeah. doesn't you know, really go away. Oh, I love that. That's one of the things that I think when we think about, well, I know, if you think about what you brought you joy when you were younger mm. and you bring that into your life now, that that fills such a big gap because as you found it doesn't it doesn't change you know what 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 you used to love is so so deeply ingrained inside that it can bring so much joy and and I think a lot of a lot of women like yourself you know get busy they get caught in their career in the family that they those sort of things that they used to have time for just disappears and then all of a sudden if you can just find something remember what used to what you used to enjoy yeah, and, no, so so true, so true. Oh, that's lovely. Now you are you've got an MBA in technology, and you've worked in the corporate world for all of your adult life. So, what sort of yeah. jobs have you had in that area? Because that's very different from the creative side of, <laughs> <laughs> of what you would have had in those classes. Yeah, de- definitely. Look, yeah. So I've been a financial advisor and really worked in that advice space for a really long time. So predominantly after I left uni, I started off and I found, I kind of fell into financial advice. And from that point, worked my way up there um, and did sort of every role around that. And I was seeing clients, I was predominantly specialising in high net worth clients. And then I had kids, I had my first sort of son, and I kind of got to a point where in my career, I had to make a choice was it to really worry about the the clients and money and everything else or worry about my my children? And so I just, it was a lot. I cared really deeply around my clients and making sure that they were okay. And I, I had to make a choice. And so I decided to take a step back from being an advisor. But all the way through that, any role that I had was about looking how could I actually improve a process? How could I use technology to help me? Because there was that love of tech that that I had. And so I then stepped into operations around that advice space and combined with tech and then really spent the next half of my career running either advice businesses from an operational technical side and then what turned into really business transformation and change. So um, going into businesses, looking at how they were running and then turning that around and identifying ways to either speed up that process, do that process differently, and then how do you use tech to enable it? And how do you bring new team members on board to uh, pull together a group of individuals to actually become what's described, you know, in corporate as a high-performing team. So really fell in love with leadership again because that was about engaging with people and understanding, well, what drives you, what motivates you, what makes you happy? And I really enjoyed that sort of leadership uh, space as well and and really understanding how do you bring uh, like-minded people together but um, take them on a journey of change as well which can be really challenging especially when you're trying to transform the way that things are done yeah that's an incredible skill set that you must have been able to nurture yeah. over the years as well and diverse because you yes. have to be good at strategy you have to be good at listening you have to be good at forward planning and projecting and then selling that idea to somebody else that would that would be no big feat yes yes but you know in the end it just comes down to the people and making sure that you do spend that time to really understand, well, what does everybody want out of this change? Um, And how can I really just be that person who helps bring everything together to provide clarity around where we're going and why? Um, And that's why I've always seen it. Uh, I know many people have asked me, oh, so, you know, what's your title? What's your role? That sort of thing. And I said, just call me Jack of all trades. <laughs> but, um, you know, really, I'm I'm the person who's behind the scenes to make sure that, you know, my team gets the credit they deserve and, and yeah. um, you know, that I clear the way for them, really, to be able to just get on with what they've got to do. Because mm-hmm. in the end, that's what we're all here for. So you've got a team of, of other people who are under you that you manage as well when you're doing yeah. that? Yeah, Yeah, so I've had that um, through really most of my career. I've had really big, large teams of sort of 50, 60 plus and then down to sort of about 10 10 or 8 
um, and it's really just working with with them to make sure I really understand, you know, what what do we need to do together? Not one person has all the answers to things, so I love to collaborate that way. So, given that you've got that incredible background and the skill set is is one that's quite particular to, to then we've got like I'm I'm at a bit of a loss for words. Then you are becoming a a fashion stylist so you decided to study so at what point did you go uh, it was it because something wasn't quite matching and you weren't feeling that great love anymore well like what was it I'm, I'm busting yeah. it's it's yeah it's really interesting I think we you know over the years you you kind of have a, a goal or a you know this is where I want to go this is what I want to achieve and then you have well, some people, like I potentially had tunnel vision. So I knew where I was going to go, but the rate at which I was trying to get there and, and the drive was very much focused on that end point. And so when I finally got there and took on a really senior leadership position, I kind of looked around and saw and said, it's really great that I'm here, but I don't feel fulfilled. And not in a negative way, but it just didn't fill my cup. And I think I started to identify that through through the journey. And it was probably at the time that I had my third child, so seven, maybe a few years before that, as I was climbing that ladder, I'd, I'd never lost my love for fashion and, and style. But what had happened was, you know, I'd had the kids, I'd put on weight, I looked around me at other leaders and there was in the organisations that I worked in, when I looked around to to have this inspiration of women, female leaders out there, what I was being shown was lots of, um, you know, amazing women, but they weren't like me. And they were perfectly pristine, um, you know, wearing sky high heels looking absolutely amazing and put together. Yet at that stage, I was a mum of two, uh, running around, still working full time, you know, a whole lot of things. And I never looked like that. And I took a really a step back at that point and going, that's not me. So how, what is it I'm trying to aspire to to be that? But that's, if I start to do that, I'm going to lose my authentic self uh, along that journey and so putting me in a pencil skirt you know very fitted outfit and heels was never going to cut it and so it came back down knowing that um, style was a bit of a trigger for me it was my happy place so I was able to, to, to kind of turn to say well I'm wearing a lot of black I'm in a few stretchy fabrics because I'm not the weight that I was how do I find who I am so I can still show up as me and and reach the the heights that I want to reach but not be restricted sort of in my clothes and not feel myself and so that was kind of the starting point for me and I actually ended up through through that process starting to change how I was dressing starting I've got a much more smart casual kind of look to me I can go um you know, more dressy as and where I need it, but it needed to feel authentically me. And um, through that process, it wasn't until just before, a couple of years before COVID, as I said, I hit this point, you know, after you've you've been through the 40s, like I'm, I'm mid-40 now, and um, you kind of look back and I think COVID gave that opportunity to to stop. I almost hit burnout at one stage and I thought it, it can't be like this any anymore. There, there's got to be more. I've got to fill my cup to get ba- balance back. And I happened to be scrolling through um, Facebook, as you do, <laughs> and there was it was like it was fate. There was an ad uh, that came up around the Australian Style Institute is where, where I studied and it just triggered me at that point. It triggered me in a way that I actually got quite teary because it, it reflected about all this journey that I'd been through and thought, should I, what, why not? What, why Why not? Maybe this is the change that I need. Maybe I've got an opportunity to be able to help other women 
with something that I absolutely love. And so that was a real turning point for, for me to do, do that. So I studied uh, through that and I've always loved education. I thrive on, on constantly learning. And so doing that course and going through that experience and, and I remember never forget walking into that room as this feeling like I'm too old to change, like I'm stuck where I am and that's it, right? It's, it's kind of over. Um, but I walked into that room and I've never felt so alive. And I felt like I'd met my people. And I think many women find it hard to find new friends um, and connect with others. And I had work colleagues and I've got personal friends that I, I've kind of worked with over the years. But I walked in there and it was like there was just this connection um, that, that I found, which I think I'd been longing for a little while. And post that then started to just go through that drive and that motivation of, well, I'm going to start working with clients. And so I started working um, with women and it was this goosebumps moment to be able to work with someone who had felt like they had been lost, whether it's they've gone through a change in circumstances or they really just didn't feel heard or they didn't feel seen. And that was something I could really resonate with because I worked in a, you know, at the time, and it still is predominantly a male dominated industry. Um, being able to find my voice in that space and being able to help others through style and their brand and how, how they feel about themselves extend um, was just amazing. And, and to get text messages and photos just sent to your phone after they turned up to a meeting or they were going out for the day and even just talking and reflecting about it now, I get goosebumps because that was the moment that I realised and said, oh, my goodness, th this is what I was here to do. The other things I can do, but this is what I was supposed to do. It was supposed to be about helping others and changing their trajectory through style and, and really understanding that connection between, um, you know, what we talk about the concept of how you feel on the inside, represent that on the outside and um, making people aware that clothes is actually an enabler. It's not a frivolous thing that sometimes the fashion industry gets kind of wrapped up in. They just think, oh, it's just clothes. It's not about anything more than that. But that wasn't the bit that ever sort of captured my my mind. It was this tra the connection to transformation and change. It was that and being able to see these women come through this journey and um, smile on the outside and, you know, everyone around them. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of pivotal points that you brought up or moments rather than points, but piv pivotal moments for you, like being in the workplace knowing it wasn't quite right, like feeling, you, you just feel that tug. And and, I, and I, I'm sure there's lots of listeners who have felt that before uh, in doing what they're doing or a point in their life. It might be work. It could be a relationship. It could be, you know, just anything. It could be just within themselves. Something's not quite right. And yet, and, and knowing that you can do something about it and you did because it's the hard thing is to do something about it. Mm. You know, although That's there right. is, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Maybe you choose your hard. It's hard to stay in it, but it's also hard and scary to move away from it. So, you know, choosing your hard, then you find that the, the next pivotal moment that you mentioned was just seeing that ad and it sent you on this trajectory where you felt that this was it. And then having a go, finishing that that course and, yeah, the, the next pivotal moment is working with women and seeing the result of that and yeah. knowing deep down that that's really what's turning your light on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's it's, that's amazing. Yeah. I, I guess reflecting on it, it, yeah, it's it's been this amazing journey of um sort of saying yes and just going with it and just mm. trying it. And again, I think that confidence comes post, you know, your 40s. Yeah. Right. You you've lived this life of experience and, and back then it was like holding you hold back. And you get nervous about doing things, but 
it, it's kind of through life and experience and journeys and, you know, seeing um, things happen to, to people, loved ones around you that you kind of go, well, what have I got to lose? What's the worst thing that could possibly happen? Someone says no or it doesn't work out. And so how do you get your mindset uh, uh, around that and, and just take the leap and see where it, where it oh, takes it's you? The mindset is the biggest thing, isn't it? It's battling your own demons in your head and those voices in your head. However, in saying that, like how, how are the people in your life who are closest to you, how have they been with you with this change of direction? Like, Have yeah. you had the support that you were hoping for? Um, look, definitely from my immediate family, absolutely. Have I had questions of, but you've got an MBA, what are you doing, <laughs> doing style? It, it, they struggle with understanding why. Um, so that takes a little bit of time to to get people to really understand what that is. But, you know, immediate family has been amazing and super supportive. And I think it's because they can see when I talk about it or um, there's a lightness that comes about. And that's something I didn't realise until it was actually pointed out to me yeah. um, a- around it. Yeah, the energy is completely different, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I get exactly what you're saying. So how do you politely talk to the people who are a bit of the naysayers and try to talk you out of your dream and they think that having a bit of paper with a, you know, and a label that you've got is far more important than following yeah. something that is a passion. So how do you talk them? Well, I mean, you don't have to convince them. The only person no. you have to convince no. is yourself. But, you know, so what do you do to to manage that? Yeah, look, a couple of things. If um, you know, if it's going to be a conversation that's that's it's going to be a naysayer or anything like that, I think I've reached this point where that negative energy. I have to make a choice. I can't, um, you know, force someone along a journey to be supportive. That that's out of my control. Um, so I've really tried to go. Well, what is in my control? And you know, is this relationship still working? And if it's going to be um, one that's going to just be really hard and make me feel uh, or take away from all the good that I'm doing, then it, it's partially a, look, thanks very much. I appreciate your opinion, but um, this is something I, I need to do and this is something I want to do. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's probably the, the main part. But, you know, others, it will be when you walk through and explain a journey that someone's on, most people will recognise and, like I said, they hear it in in the way that you speak quite passionately uh, around it that they understand why. Yep, yep. And often it's a projection of their own fears mm. that they put onto you anyway, isn't it, where they're going, yeah. I mightn't be able to do that, so how can you? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Exactly. Um, you're you're married. You're a mum to three. You still work in your corporate job. Is that full time or part time? How do you and, and, and you're creating a business? How do you how are you doing it all? Yeah, I've got a balls up in the air for you. A lot of balls. I've got an amazing husband, so he's a business owner as well, and uh, so he has always been super super flexible, and he will always you know help me juggle um, the balls up in the air. And I think it's also, yes, working, still working full time at this stage, but it's been really planning. It's planning. I'm an organiser and look, don't get me wrong. There are some days where I feel completely frazzled, but it's actually being able to carve out certain time for me to actually go, hang on, I just need a couple of hours of quiet and no interruption to plan out what, what am I doing? Where am I going and what are the biggest things I can tackle this week um, or I need to tackle this week in order to edge me sort of further or achieve what I, what I need to set out for, for that, that week. And a lot of time that will happen very early in the morning or it might happen on a uh, sort of Sunday afternoon type thing around that juggle and planning. So, um, you know, again, I've got a kudos to my current work in that in in the kind of corporate world is they've got a very flexible work environment as well so which allows as long as I get my work done um, I just have to balance that through and um, you know uh, make sure I'm ticking the boxes on both sides yes 
Yes. And what's your dream for the business? What where where are you hoping this is going to take you and what, what it could possibly look like? Yeah, I mean, look, I, for, for me, if I could be doing this full time, this that would be my absolute dream. Um, I think it is a concept that we talk about a lot, which is that life by design. And uh, that's what I, I want. I've got my last little girl and she is seven. So I really want to be able to spend more time with her and be more around and available um, mm. than I was for, for my older two. But that's if I could get that balance and be able to share the message more around the impact that style can actually have on uh, women and how you feel about yourself, then I would love to be able to do that more. Yeah. No, that sounds wonderful, Sonia. Thank you. I've got that it leads in really well to this this next question that I have that you know a lot of women in the middle of life go through so many different changes and they start to see themselves in a different light and we've kind of covered on that uh, in, in a, a discussion so far for some women they may not feel comfortable in the styles they used to wear some may be because their body is changing and they you know they what used to be great on them doesn't look so good anymore or maybe they just can't fit into their clothes so where do you suggest they begin? Yeah, look, I think the simplest way to start is actually taking a look at what you've got in your wardrobe today and thinking about if you put an outfit on, how does that actually make you feel, right? So, you know, doing when you've got it on, because a lot of time we're actually all on autopilot, right? Because we've got a million things to do, we're running around. And so what I love to do with some of my clients is is say, okay, for the next five days, I want you to actually consciously consider a few things. One, when you've got an outfit on, A, how does that make you feel when you look in the mirror? Um, what What does it feel like through the day? Are you getting compliments? Are you feeling mm, it, it's uncomfortable? What What is it? And I want you to write those things down. And if you do that consecutively, over a few days, sometimes you can start to pick up on a pattern there. You'll you'll know that's the go-to outfit that actually made me feel amazing. And all my friends kept telling me, my God, your complexion looked amazing in that or or things like that. So to at least start that process of I'm starting to see this pattern or theme emerging as a starting point. And then from there, being able to start to identify, well, what is it about those items that I really like? Because that'll start to take you into your starting to really discover what your personal style is. And also taking a look around and seeing what you don't resonate with versus what you do now. Mm. Just because it's in your wardrobe from yesteryear doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, it's going to work today. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and if I was a, like, say I was a client, Sonia, and I came to you, what sort of things would you do for me? Like, yeah. what, how do you help? Yeah, definitely. So um, predominantly I work with, we do like an end-to-end session where if you're coming through around your personal brand and um, looking to reinvigorate your style and so forth, we'll sit down and we'll actually do a really comprehensive consultation before we even get to the clothes because it is so important for me to understand who you are. It's not about um, me trying to put my style on, on you. It's understanding your lifestyle. It's understanding where you want to be or where you want to get to from a style perspective and generally if it's a career review and then from there really getting down to what is your style so we we work through a system called where we identify a your style category and then we see if that aligns to what your personal brand categories might be as well so then we can align those two we will then move into a wardrobe review so we'll have a look at your existing uh, wardrobe, see there's pieces that work that don't work and it, it's also trying to understand actually you've got some great things how do how do you now mix and match these together to create that outcome you're looking for yeah, that's and a then, key point isn't it because a lot of we've got you know most women have got a lot of stuff in their wardrobe yes. and you just put the same things together all the time just having fresh eyes to come in and say have you thought of putting that with that would be I, actually I would love someone to do that <laughs> So the last client I had, we basically, uh, in our sessions, we ended up using 80% of her existing oh, wow. wardrobe 
reworked it. And these are some pieces that she'd had for maybe 10 years or so, but they were really quality pieces. Through this process, you end up with a personalised sort of brand and, and lookbook there. So I created uh, 25 looks for her that she goes to as a bit of a like a little guide for inspiration. But it's it's actually pictures of her pieces in her wardrobe that have been put together. And then I've added links for some ad- small additional pieces. So actually her uh-huh. buy was very little, but it was just the pieces she was missing to actually bring that whole look uh, together, which, you know, I That's get pictures brilliant. of her jolly. <laughs> so in my mind I'm thinking, oh, God, it'd mean you'd have to go shopping and spend a bucket load. But no. if that means that you could... You could actually use what you've got because yes. I mean, my, my, my style collection, if I think about it, <laughs> it, 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 it my, my little book would be a fairly thin little pamphlet, I read. Because <laughs> you do, you go to your, your and that's what it's, you might be able to tell me what the statistic is on the clothes that you wear. Like it, it's, oh, it's like 80% of our, like we don't wear yes. it's close to 80% of our yep. wardrobe, right? Yep. So it doesn't matter what you tell yourself in your head, oh, I'm going to wear that or I'll put it with that. You don't. You go to no. your old favourites. Yeah, that would be, be a great, great thing to have. So, yeah, my pamphlet be, could become a chapter book. You could have a few different <laughs> <laughs> a few different yeah. books. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, You know, so we kind of work through that whole piece and even that shopping piece. You know, uh, with this particular client, I, I had worked with her face to face initially, but then um, for the shopping piece, it was all done virtually. So mm. it was links for her, so that she could go in her own time to um, have a look through and and purchase when she was ready to do that. Um, you know, most of my clients are pretty busy running around to doing what they've got to do. So you know, some will want to do a shop, and some will want to look. Can can you just give me? sort of that list and help me work that together so Mm. um that's yeah one one of the major aspects of the the work that I do yeah fantastic and you've also got a free guide on how to find your style yes share that with the listeners as well because I'm sure a lot of women will be interested in finding what their style (laughs) might be Absolutely. That's um, yeah. So it's definitely it's three steps. Uh, the ultimate Kickstarter guide. Oh. So that will cover off on some of finding your personal style, thinking about some of your core uh, basics in your wardrobe, and um, some things to remember when you're organising your wardrobe as well. So it's a bit of a bumper uh, pack, but love to hear if any of your listeners uh, give it a go. Love yeah. to hear how you go. <laughs> yeah. So if I put the the link to that in the show notes as well, Sonia, you've given me given me that information. Yes. Yep. Beautiful. Yes, absolutely. It's okay. uh it's your styled collective.com.au forward slash uh style dash guide. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, we'll make sure it goes into the show notes. So who are your style icons? Have you got anyone in particular I, or people? I, yeah. Yeah, look, I, I would say um I actually love uh Victoria Beckham today in terms of her look and style, which a lot of it is her collection. Um, also, it would be uh, probably a dash of Olivia Palermo. Um, always loved her her sort of look. There was always a, a level of, um, say, sophisticated, uh, classic, but there was always a bit of a, a twist to it. So I'd say they're, they're probably my two, two yep. favourites. Brilliant. It's always interesting to hear who people's. Like I haven't seen a a, reg, a, a recent photo of Victoria Beckham for. Well, I can't think of the last time. <laughs> yeah, for a long time. Be interesting to have a look and see this. So she got sort of the the style that you like to wear personally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, personally. Um. Yeah. So she, I think it's ever since she. So please don't think back to the Spice Girls day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just thinking when she was just very thin and haunted looking in the young. Yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Okay. But um, actually, a lot of her collection, um, she wears. She's got an amazing talent for color. Mm. And being able to mix it and kind of match that, um, so I, I actually admire the way that she does that. She, she yeah. does a really good job. Yeah. Okay. So where the whole podcast is is around midlife and redefining our midlife. So I, I just love the fact that you have yeah, decided to make such a big change and follow your dreams and your passions. That to me is is huge. So big kudos to you. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. There's a lot of things that are happening, multi-layered changes that are happening as we, we, you know, as we become a woman in our 40s and our 50s. And there's so many great opportunities that can come in the next half of life that we've got ahead of us. 
So what are some of the good and the not so good things that you might be noticing now that you are in, you know, this this half of life? Well, yeah, okay. half of life because at 45 you are, you know. Yes, I'm not smack bang in the yeah. thick of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, look, I, I would say the good thing is I think I'm so much more relaxed as a parent than I was even 10, 10 years ago, much more uh, open to, you know, things don't have to be a particular way. Like you can learn from lots of different influences and things like that that happen around. And so I think I've probably been calmer than I, than I was <laughs> uh, yeah. sort of younger years. I think, um, you know what, my my patience level is probably a bit thinner, though, to some extent. It's more so that, um, you know, if someone really wants to get their message across and, and say what they've got to say, it's don't beat around the bush. Just get to the point. Say it like it is. Don't be scared to say it to me. And because, you know, you've lived uh, you lived your life, you know, no mm. fluff. So yeah. just straight to the point is really yeah. uh, one of the things I've noticed uh, of late as well. And Sonia, what are some of the things that you do to support your health and wellness now, you know, now that it becomes, you know, really more important, doesn't it? You, you notice the effects if you're not looking after your health and wellness. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, my girlfriends and I always say it's like I um, breathe and I put weight on. So, <laughs> so, so for me, it's actually getting out and doing that physical activity, you know, whether that's walking or exercising with a PT, I, I've got to make sure that's scheduled um, because if I leave it up to chance, it may not happen because mm. I'll end up getting you know busy with work and things like that. Um, but it's absolutely critical uh, that it has to happen. So, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it has to happen. And then I try to make sure that I'm out in nature and, and fresh air because it's it just helps clear that, you know, the clutter from, from your mind, I think. Yeah, no, that's so, great advice that you're doing. And what are you most looking forward to in this stage of life? Oh, what's to come? I, I really, I, I feel like there's so much ahead. Uh, that I haven't yet had the opportunity to really open that door and see what's behind it. So I'm really, really excited about that. And I think, you know, that the first half has been exciting and change and different. And I think there's a world of opportunity just if I nudge that door a little bit further. Yeah. Oh, totally agree. It's ex it is exciting though, isn't it? Because you don't know what's going to be lying ahead, but you know everything that you've done has brought you to this point so far exactly and it's, and it's just just taking that little step day by day to get you somewhere that could be completely different doesn't have to be massive change no it's yeah. it's just that yeah it's that opportunity and I, I think being open um you know being at the right place right time to be open to it yes yep and, have, and having that support network around you as well to hold your hand yes. if and when you need it is exactly. a good safety net to have as well. I mean, you, you've ultimately got to do it yourself, but it really, it does, you know, it does help to have somebody there behind you who believes in you as well. Absolutely yeah. critical. <laughs> yeah, I, I so look forward to to seeing where your business is going to take you and, and, and how it's going to look even in, you know, five years' time, let alone 10 years' time. I mean, it's going to be sky's the limit really, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Mm. And it may not look like what we think it's going to look like now. We can have an envision in our in our head, oh, this is how I'd love it to look, but it could, could be completely different. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, that's that's the exciting bit, right? It's, yeah. It's the flexibility of change. Yes. And um, being open to that. Yeah, yeah, totally agree with that. Now I'll put the ways that people can connect to you in the show notes as well. So you're on Instagram yes. at Your Style Collective. Is that correct? correct? Yep. And yes. the website and all the links there for that that little freebie that you've got on the, the guide on how to find your style will be there as well. So to wrap up, Sonia, I've just got one final question that I always ask my guests. And is it it's if you could look into the future, what do you hope 80-year-old Sonia will say about current day Sonia? Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think I would say that the regrets are small that I lived and took opportunities and faced fears to end up where I am at that point. And uh, yeah. 
That's very special. I think 80 year old Sonia is going to be very proud of her current day, Sonia. <laughs> make me cry oh. <laughs> it's been an absolute joy to have you on today and i'm sure the listeners are going to get as i said at the beginning are going to get so much out of our chat today so thank you very much sonia oh thank you joe it's been lovely to chat <laughs> it has been all right see you later bye thanks so much for listening and sharing your time with me today i'd love you to hit subscribe on apple podcast or your favorite podcast app to keep spreading these empowering messages Please share this podcast with other incredible midlife women in your world. Join me again next week for another redefining midlife conversation. Thanks again for tuning in.